Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to detect circles in a video frame using OpenCV in Python. So this is going to use the Huff Circle Transform technique. It's this technique that was theorized a few decades ago, maybe a few years ago, and it's very commonly used to detect circles in a very simple manner. So we'll just be using that to be able to detect circles. So we'll use a ball to test out our program. So let's start off by importing the necessary things. So we'll import CV2, I'll just call it as CV. And so this is op the open CV framework. And then I also need NumPy. Import NumPy, or you might call it NumPy. NumPy as NP. All right, once we have that, we need to access our video capture device. So we're either gonna use a webcam or we're going to use a file. So in my case, I have a webcam set up, so I'll just use that. So I'll say video capture is equal to cv.video capture. That's your device. And I'm going to use device number two since that's the device that my webcam is. You might have to play around with these numbers to see which webcam is yours, but uh, once you get it, you should be able to make it work. And then I'm just going to start off with just making sure our frame is able to be captured. So I'll say while true. And to actually get the frame, to read the frame from the video capture, I'm gonna say ret frame is equal to video capture dot read. So here, this is going to return a value of whether or not it was able to return a red frame. And then here is the actual frame itself. So now we have to make sure the frame actually exists. So if not red, we're just gonna break. All right, once we have that, let's just make sure that our frame works. So we'll show it in a window. We'll say cv.imshow. And let's call this frame. That's the name of the window. And we'll give frame as our input window. And after this, we want to make sure that we can quit the window if possible, whenever we want. So we'll say if cv.wait key one, and then we'll put and, and then we'll put zero xff, that's a hex code. If this is equal to ORD, so we're converting the key Q to the correct integer value. That means if we click the key Q, we should break out of this. And finally, outside this loop, we can say video capture dot release. And we can say cv.destroy all windows to close all the windows that we have created. Okay, let's test this out, make sure it works. So we run this. And we can see here that I have a window showing up with my backdrop. So as you can see here, my hand is moving pretty close here and I've just positioned it facing a wall. All right, looks good. And then I can click Q and exit that. All right, so now we come to the actual algorithm. So we can just comment this out or we can just get rid of it all together on line 10. Let's make a few spaces here. So let's start off by just converting our frame to a grayscale and making it blurred. Because remember when we ran it before, it had color and then it might have had some noise we saw before. So we just want to get rid of all that. So the first step is gray frame is equal to cv dot cvt color that is going to allow us to convert to a different color space. So we'll use frame. And the color space we want is cv dot color bgr to gray. So we're converting from RGB or technically bgr to gray. Okay. And once we do this, we want to blur it. This is going to help get rid of any noise. And the best one to use here is a Gaussian blur. So we'll use blur frame is equal to CV dot Gaussian blur. Our source is the gray frame. And now we need a kernel size. Remember a kernel size always has to be a tuple that has two elements where both the elements are odd integers. This is going to tell it the size of the mini window that it is inspecting to figure out the blur. So for the purposes of this, I'll just say 17, 17. So as you put larger numbers for these, as you put larger odd integers, it's going to make it more blurred. And as you put less, it'll make it less blurred. And then the sigma x, I'm just gonna set as zero. And those are all the required parameters. Okay, so now we have a blurred frame. Let's just make sure that this works. We'll say cv.imshow blur frame. And we'll select blur frame as the correct frame here. Okay, let's run this. And we can see here we have a grayscale image that is also blurred. So remember before it was much clearer and it was in color, but now it is blurred. So this will help mitigate some of the background noise that we see here. So then when we actually use the half circle transform, it's not going to detect as many stray circles as it would have before. So let's close out of this and we can remove line 13. So here is where we're going to use the half circle transform. So we can say circles 
is equal to CB dot Huff circles. And here's what we do. So we need our source image. This is going to be blur frame. And then we need some method of performing the Huff transform. So the one we typically use is CB dot Huff gradient. So we'll use that one. And then we need a DP. So the DP is going to be such that if it's larger, then the circles that we find that are closer to each other are going to be merged. They're more likely to be merged. So this is going to result in the circle position being not as accurate, but it will have made a more calculated decision. So we're just going to keep it at 1.2. You can experiment around with this number, but uh, it should be around 1, 1.2, 1.4. Um, but just play around with this number. I found 1.2 to work for me. Next, we need the min distance. So min distance is going to be the minimum distance between two possible circles that are found. So if we only want to find a single circle in our frame, then it makes sense to have a higher number like 100, as I've tested before, so that the distance between the centers of two circles is going to have to be at least greater than 100 in order for the two circles to qualify as different circles. Now, once we have that, we need the actual uh, parameters. So param1, we'll say that param1 is equal to, in my case, 100. So param1 is going to be the sensitivity. So this is sensitivity of circle detection. If it's too high, it's not going to find enough circles. And if it's too low, it's going to find too many circles. So when I tested this, 100 worked out for me. But you might want to play around with this number. Now, the next parameter, and I'll just move this to the next line. The next parameter is param2. This is the accuracy of circle detection. So the way this works is it sets the number of edge points that are needed to declare that there is a circle. So I'm going to say 30, meaning that there are a minimum of 30 edge points needed to declare that a circle is indeed present. And again, if you make it too high, it's not going to find enough circles. If you make it too low, it's going to find too many circles. And then the last two parameters we can include are min radius and max radius. So the minimum radius is the minimum size of the circle that can be detected. In my case, I want it to detect maybe circles that are farther away from the webcam. So I might say 75 as my minimum bound. And then the maximum radius, this is going to be when objects are much closer to the webcam. So when objects are close, closer to the webcam, they're going to appear bigger. In my case, I might want it to be around 400. So these numbers are the ones that work for me. And once I provide all these parameters, the Huff circles method is going to return a list of the circles that it found, all those positions. And that's going to be stored in circles. So once we have this, we need to go through the circles list. So if circles is none, that is basically saying, do we have circles? If we do have circles, then we want to convert this to a numpy array or a numpy array. So we'll say circles is equal to np.uint 16, np.around circles. And so those are the circles that we have. Next, we want to find the best possible circle. So the best circle is going to be the one that is closest in size and in position to the previous circle, because we, we want to make sure that we're not taking as many random circles as possible. This will still generate some random circles, but at least it'll be a more calculated decision. So to do this, we're going to actually need to create a variable before this. So on line five, I'm going to write prev circle is equal to none. Prev circle is going to represent the circle from the previous frame that represents the current object, the current ball or circle that is in the frame. So it starts off as none because there is no circle at the beginning. And then I'm going to declare a function dist, which is going to calculate the distance, the square of the distance between two of the points in a frame. So I'll say dist is equal to lambda, oops, lambda x1, x2, or x1, y1, x2, y2. And rather than returning the square root, which is the distance formula, I'm just going to return the, the entire thing itself. So that's x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. All right, now that we have this, let's create a chosen variable circle. I'm going to call it chosen. Let's set chosen equals none. So for i in circles, let's iterate through all the circles and let's say 0 go to the end of that. And then we have this. And we have to check if the circle is none, if C is none, because it starts off as none. So if it is, if chosen is none, just set it equal to the first item, chosen is equal to I. 
That way we have something to compare to. And now we're going to check if prev circle is not none, then if the distance from chosen the x coordinate and then chosen the y coordinate and then prev circle the x coordinate and prev circle the y coordinate is less than or equal to the distance from the current point that we're on. So that's i0, i1, and then prev circle 0, and prev circle 1. So if we found a closer circle, a, a circle that's closer in center point, we're going to set this as our new center. So chosen is equal to i. All right, so that goes through all the circles and selects the best one. And now we can finally draw a circle around the object. So we'll draw a circle to represent the radius or the center point of the object. And then we'll draw a circle around the circumference. So cv.circle. And let's apply this to the original frame just so then we don't see any of those uh, frame changes that we made when we converted to a grayscale and when we blurred it. So cv.circle, we'll set frame as our source. And then we'll say that we want our center point to be chosen at zero and chosen at one. And our radius, let's just say it's one because this is the center point. And let's make the color zero, 100, and 100. And then we'll say three. Three is going to be the thickness of the circle. And let's make another circle, cv.circle. This goes around the circumference of the circle that we detected. Let's call it frame as our source. And then here again, we'll put chosen zero, chosen one. And this time for the radius, we'll put C or chosen two. So that's going to be the radius. And we'll put a different color here. Let's say 255, zero, 255. And again, we'll put a thickness of three. And I think I have an extra thing here. Oh, yes, I do. So I need to put a closing parentheses there and remove this one here. All right. And finally, we have to set the previous circle to the current circle. So prev circle is equal to chosen. And that's all we have to do. So now we can show this particular circle in our frame. cv.im show circles. And let's display the frame. So these two lines just added those circles onto the frame. And now we can show the result of the frame. So let's run this now. Running this code. And it looks like there was an error. Oh, right. Line 18, this should be is not none. I mistyped here. Okay, let's run this again. And now we can see we have a frame here. I'll put a ball. And you can see now there is a pink circle tracking that ball. So I'm not moving too fast because the Huff circle transform isn't too great at tracking fast objects. That can be fixed with an elliptical transform. But you can see here that it's able to track the ball. There are some occasional weird circles that show up, but otherwise it's doing a pretty good job. So that's it for this video and I hope this was helpful.